He was just such a natural musician. I think that's what always struck me. You know, he we were uh, actually rehearsing for the first Jaco Pastorius performance at Seventh Avenue South, and I remember my wife Carla, who was playing flute at the time, came by the rehearsal, and she had her flute. And Mike said, "Oh, a flute!" And can I take a look at it? So she went, "Sure." So she hands him the flute, and he says, "I haven't played the flute in years." You know, and he picks up this flute, and he sounds like. John Coltrane meets Jean Ron Paul, you know, and just just like destroys the flute. And <laughs> just hit the ground, you know. I mean he was that kind of musician, just so connected and natural in everything he did, um, with such cleverness and joy of life and uh, it was really it was inspiring and aggravating <laughs> simultaneously like, how do you do that? you know? But uh he was just a great guy and I always really appreciated the time spent with him. The projects I was on with him, of course I was awestruck and again it's I guess it's a little bit similar to Randy but uh, how comfortable he made me feel about what I was doing. Yeah. You know, He made me feel like he really dug what I was doing which you know I gave me great confidence to go on, it you know, gave me the inspiration to go on uh, and I just of course I can remember so many times I heard him play and and I just remember, I, I think that was the point you could pinpoint where the what you could play on the saxophone was expanded. Everybody could point to, well, now the saxophone, what's capable of playing the saxophone has just ex been expanded. That was the sensation hearing. And I, because I had some actually, I was once with a saxophone teacher and we were listening to him. He said, you know, this is the first time since like John Coltrane, we feel like the tennis sax has been expanded again as to what do things that was never done on it you know and maybe that's happened again today with Chris you know Chris Potter I think people point to but it's like this this line you know and and uh, 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 Michael definitely took it to a new level the thing I remember the most is just warm conversations I had with him and how he made me feel about the way I played <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
He was so receptive, you know, um, I, I, he was such, in addition to being obviously such a saxophonistic giant, um, he was also a great improviser and I think held that, you know, as, as, as I remember, you know, one, really his, his, the thing that, that indicated to him whether he was playing great or not. I mean, I remember, I don't know if this is accurate across the board, but in my experience playing with him, sometimes we'd play a gig and he would just, be, would be unbelievable. And we'd come off the stage and I'd go, Mike, man, that was, and he'd go, oh, I couldn't, you know, I wasn't really making it. And I'd go, are you crazy? That was like it, unbelievable. And sometimes, and this happened relatively rarely, he'd come off the stage and he'd have a smile and he had sounded unbelievable and maybe different that night and he'd say, you know what, <clears throat> I felt like I was really improvising tonight. And he really, I could tell that that's what really meant something to him. He could always play the saxophone in an astounding way with, you know, just heaps of energy and... Um, and I felt as an, as an accompanist that he would he was very reactive and open to what you played, you know, while you were comping, you know. And I tried to be, you know, I listened very carefully to what he was doing and, and always played in groups of his where there were fantastic rhythm sections that would, um, you know, uh, uh, provide a lot of different opportunities to interact with while being supportive. But um, he, was, he was very open about accompaniment. And I... I I sort of not echoing what Bob said, but I had the uh, I think Pat Metheny a couple times said to me, you know, we belong to a special club, and I said, what is that? And he said, well, we're among the few uh, guitarists who had to play solos after Mike soloed, and it was sort of like this, oh man, you know. <laughs> so I mean, just playing with him, the the aside from all of the obvious virtuosic harmonic things, I mean, the amount of energy he generated was so unbelievable, you know, and to to play with him and to um, and to also try to take a solo, you know, was, was one of the great learning experiences of my life because it was so inspiring and, you know, and awe-inspiring and sort of intimidating and all of those things, and it really made you feel like, okay, what am I doing? You know, what am I going to, what's my, you know, when you're standing next to that kind of identity and strength and energy, it really inspires you to sort of figure out where that is in yourself. Um, and to echo everything everybody else has said, you know, he was just one of, 
the greatest human beings. He was such an amazing person, and as Kenny said, you know, was so so encouraging and and um, you know, but would say stuff sometimes as a band leader. Hey, you know, I think this could be this, or you know, some very very useful um, tips. And he was just amazing to be around. Oh, my God. 